The first reading is taken from the book of Genesis, chapter 2, from verse 4 to verse 9. This story tells how God created Adam. Tonight we celebrate our new creation in Jesus Christ, who breathes the Holy Spirit upon us. And that is how the universe was created. When the Lord God made the universe, there were no plants on the earth, and no seeds had sprouted, because he had not sent any rain. And there was no one to cultivate the land. But water would come up from beneath the surface and water the ground. Then the Lord God took some soil from the ground and formed a man out of it. He breathed life-giving breath into his nostrils, and the man began to live. Then the Lord God planted a garden in Eden, in the east, and there he put the man he had formed. He made all kinds of beautiful trees grow there and produce good fruit. In the middle of the garden stood the tree that gives life and the tree that gives knowledge of what is good and what is evil. Hear the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I must apologize for the beginning of the service where you only got the audio, uh, the, the video. Um, I realized during the reading by Kanyo and Pilo that the microphone has been off. Um, what we did was light the candle and bless the fire and Elaine read the exalted. Um, we continue with our readings. Thank you. Pilo and Kanye. Is good and what is evil. Hear the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. From Psalm 33, Rejoice in the Lord, you righteous. For it befits the just to praise him. By the word of the Lord, where the heavens made, and their numberless stars by the breath of his mouth. He gathered the waters of the sea as in a water skin, and laid up the deep in his treasures. Let the whole earth fear the Lord, and let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of him. For he spoke, and it was done. He commanded, and it stood fast. Let us pray. Almighty God, you wonderfully created and still more wonderfully redeemed us. Bring us to those lasting joys which you have prepared for us through the sacrifice of Christ our Passover, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The second reading. This story witnesses to the common human experience of separation of God through disobedience and hints at redemption through a descendant of the woman. Now the serpent was more crafty than any of the wild animals the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, did God really say you must not eat from any tree in the garden? The woman said to the serpent, We may eat fruit from the trees in the garden, but God did say, You must not eat fruit from the tree that is in the middle of the garden, and you must not touch it, 
or you will die. You will not surely die, the serpent said to the woman. For God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. When the woman saw that the fruit of the tree was good for food and pleasing to the eye, and also desirable for gaining wisdom, she took some and ate it. She also gave some to her husband who was with her, and he ate it. Then the eyes of both of them were opened, and they realized they were naked. So they sewed fig leaves together and made coverings for themselves. Then the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord God when he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and they hid from the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man, Where are you? He answered, I heard you in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid. And he said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree that I commanded you not to eat from? The man said, The woman you put here with me, she gave me some fruit from the tree, and I ate it. Then the Lord God said to the woman, What is this you have done? The woman said, The serpent deceived me, and I ate. So the Lord God said to the serpent, he who Because you have done this, Cursed are you above all the wild livestock and all the wild animals. You will crawl on your belly, and you will eat dust all the days of your life. And I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and hers. He will crush your head, and you will strike his heel. To the woman he said, I will greatly increase your pains and childbearing. With pain you will give birth to children. Your desire will be for your husband, and he will rule over you. To Adam he said, Because you listened to your wife and ate from the tree about which I commanded you, you must not eat of it. Cursed is the ground because of you. Through painful toil you will eat of it all the days of your life. It will produce thorns and thistles for you and you will eat the plants of the field. By the sweat of your brow, you will eat your food until you return to the ground, since from it you were taken. For dust you are, and to dust you will return. Who is forgiven, whose iniquity is put away. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord imputes no blame, and in whose spirit there is no guile. Then I acknowledged my sin to you, and my iniquity I did not hide. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, and so you forgave the wickedness of my sin. Great tribulations remain for the ungodly, but whoever puts his trust in the Lord, mercy embraces him on every side. Let us pray. Almighty God, you sent your Son into the world to set us free from sin. Enable us to withstand temptation and to abide in your presence. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The third reading. In obedience to God, Abraham was prepared to sacrifice his only son, Isaac. But in response to Abraham's obedience, God refused the sacrifice, though he would not refuse the sacrifice of his own son, Jesus, the Lamb of God. A reading from Genesis chapter 22, starting at verse 1. Some little time later, God tested Abraham. He said to him, Abraham, here I am, he replied. Then God said, take your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love, and go to the region of Moriah. 
Sacrifice him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains I will tell you about. Early the next morning, Abraham got up and saddled his donkey. He took with him two of his servants and his son Isaac. When he had cut enough wood for the burnt offering, he set out for the place God had told him about. On the third day, Abraham looked up and saw the place in the distance. He said to his servants, Stay here with the donkey while I and the boy go over there. We will worship and then we will come back to you. Abraham took the wood for the burnt offering and placed it on his son Isaac, and he himself carried the fire and a knife. As the two of them went on together, Isaac spoke up and said to his father Abraham, Father? Yes, my son, Abraham replied. The fire and wood are here, Isaac said, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Abraham answered, God himself will provide the lamb for the burnt offering, my son. And the two of them went on together. When they reached the place God had told him about, Abraham built an altar there and arranged the wood on it. He bound his son Isaac and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. Then he reached out his hand and took the knife to slay his son. But the angel of the Lord called out to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham. Here I am, he replied. Do not lay a hand on the boy, he said. Do not do anything to him. Now I know that you fear God because you have not withheld from me your son, your only son. Abraham looked up, and there in a thicket he saw a ram caught by its horns. He went over and took the ram and sacrificed it as a burnt offering instead of his son. So Abraham called that place, The Lord Will Provide. And to this day it is said, On the mountain of the Lord it will be provided. The angel of the Lord called to Abraham from heaven a second time and said, I swear by myself, declares the Lord, that because you have done this and have not withheld your son, your only son, I will surely bless you and make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and as the sand on the seashore. Your descendants will take possession of the cities of their enemies, and through your offering, all nations on earth will be blessed, because you have obeyed me. Psalm 40 Sacrifice and offering you do not desire, but my ears you have marked for obedience. Burnt offering and sin offering you have not required. Then said I, Lo, in the scroll of the book it is written of me that I should do your will. O oh my God, I long to do it. Your law delights my heart. I have declared your righteousness in the great congregation. I have not I have declared your righteousness in the great congregation. I have not restrained my lips, O Lord, and that you know. I have not hidden your righteousness in my heart. I have spoken of your faithfulness and of your salvation. I have not kept back your loving kindness and your truth from the great congregation. Let us pray. Merciful Father, you accepted the sacrifice of your only beloved Son. Unite us with him in his self-offering and make us obedient to you in all things. 
through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. During their escape from Egypt, God led the Israelites safely through the waters of the Red Sea in which the pursuing Egyptians were destroyed. Foreshadowing our own deliverance through the waters of baptism. Exodus 14, verse 15 to 15, 1a. Then the Lord said to Moses, Why are you crying out to me? Tell the Israelites to move on. Raise your staff and stretch out your hand over the sea to divide the water so that the Israelites can go through the sea on dry ground. I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians so that they will go in after them, and I will gain glory through Pharaoh and all his armies, through his chariots and his horsemen. The Egyptians will know that I am the Lord when I gain glory through Pharaoh, his chariots and his horsemen. Then the angel of God, who had been traveling in front of Israel's army, withdrew and went behind them. The pillar of cloud also moved from in front and stood behind them, coming between the armies of Egypt and Israel. Throughout the night the cloud brought darkness to the one side, and light to the other, so neither went near the other all night long. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and all that night the Lord drove the sea back with a strong east wind, and turned it into dry land. The waters were divided, and the Israels went through the sea on dry ground, with a wall of water on their right and on their left. The Egyptians pursued him, pursued them, and all Pharaoh's horses and chariots and horsemen followed them into the sea. During the last watch of the night, the Lord looked down from the pillar of fire and cloud at the Egyptian army and threw it into confusion. He jammed the wheels of their chariots so that they had difficulty driving. And the Egyptians said, let's get away from the Israelites. The Lord is fighting for them against Egypt. Then the Lord said to Moses, Stretch out your hand over the sea so that the waters may flow back over the Egyptians and their chariots and horsemen. Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and at daybreak the sea went back to its place. The Egyptians were fleeing towards it, and the Lord swept them into the sea. The water flowed back and covered the chariots and horsemen, the entire army of Pharaoh that had followed the Israelites into the sea. Not one of them survived. But the Israelites went through the sea on dry ground with a wall of water on their right and on their left. That day the Lord saved Israel from the hands of the Egyptians, and Israel saw the Egyptians lying dead on the shore. And when the Israelites saw the mighty hand of the Lord displayed against the Egyptians, the people feared the Lord and put their trust in him and Moses, his servant. Then Moses and the Israelites sang this song to the Lord. I will sing to the Lord, for he is highly exalted. Both the horse and the driver he has hurled into the sea. The Lord is my strength and my defense. He has become my salvation. He is my God and I will praise him. My father's God and I will exalt him. The Lord is a warrior. The Lord is his name. Pharaoh's chariots and his army he has hurled into the sea. The best of Pharaoh's officers are drowned in the Red Sea. The deep waters have covered them. They sank. To the depths like a stone, your right hand 
Lord, was ma majestic in power. Your right hand, Lord, shattered the enemy. Let us pray. Lord God, you made the Red Sea a symbol of our baptism and the nation you redeemed a sign of your Christian people. Grant that people of every nation may come to the new birth of water and the Holy Spirit and share by faith in the privilege of Israel. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let's read it. At Mount Sinai, God established the Israelites as his chosen people by making his covenant with them. This first covenant was sealed in the blood of animal sacrifices. The new covenant would be sealed in the blood of the Lamb of God. Exodus 24, verses 3 to 8. From Psalm 111. Oh, praise the Lord. I will praise the Lord with my whole heart in the company of the upright and among the congregation. His marvelous acts have won him a name to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and merciful. He gives food to those that fear him. He remembers his covenant forever. He showed his people the power of his acts in giving them the heritage of the heathen. The works of his hands are faithful and just, and all his commandments are sure. They stand firm forever and ever. They are done in faithfulness and in truth. He sent redemption to his people. He ordained his covenant forever. Holy is his name and worthy to be feared. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and of good understanding are those that keep his commandments. His praise shall endure forever. Let us pray. Almighty Father, without your grace we cannot obey your law. Fill our hearts with love for you, that we may keep your commandments and do your will. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The sixth reading. God promised to purify the people of Israel to renew them in heart and spirit, and to make them his own people. God did this not only for their own sake, but that through them the world might come to know him. A reading from Ezekiel, chapter 36, reading verses 22 to 28. Therefore, Say to the house of Israel, This is what the Sovereign Lord says. It is not for your sake, O house of Israel, that I am going to do these things, but for the sake of my holy name, which you have profaned among the nations where you have gone. I will show the holiness of my great name, which has been profaned among the nations, the name you have profaned among them. Then the nations will know that I am the Lord, declares the Sovereign Lord, when I show myself holy through you before their eyes. For I will take you out of the nations, I will gather you from all the countries and bring you back into your own land. I will sprinkle clean water on you and you will be clean. I will cleanse you from all your impurities and from all your idols. I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. I will remove from you your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit in you and move you to follow my decrees and be careful to keep my laws. You will live in the land I gave to your forefathers. You will be my people, and I will be your God. 
A reading from Psalm 57. Be merciful to me, O God, be merciful, for I come to you for shelter. In the shadow of your wings will I take refuge until these troubles are over, past. I will call to God Most High, to the God who will fulfill his purpose for me. He will send from heaven and save me. He will send forth his faithfulness and his loving kindness and rebuke those that would trample me down. For I lie amidst ravening lions, men whose teeth are spears and arrows, and their tongue a sharpened sword. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens, and let your glory be over all the earth. Let us pray. Almighty Father, you have chosen us to be your own people. Take away our hearts of stone and give us hearts of flesh that your holiness may be revealed in us through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you to all our readers. Thank you for taking part in this way. I really appreciate it. At this time, we would normally be lighting the altar candles, but thanks to Jen, who gave us a picture of a little altar that she built in her home, those candles are already lit. Please join me as we say together the Gloria. Uh, let me just find it here so that you can share with me the words. There we go. We say the Gloria together. Glory to, to God, God in the highest, and, and peace, peace to his, his people on earth. earth. Lord God, Amen. Heavenly King, Almighty God, God and Father, we Amen. worship you, we give you thanks, we, we praise, praise you for your, your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, Christ only Son of the Father, Father Lord God, Lamb of God, God you, you take away the sin of the world, world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Say with me the collect for the day, please. Almighty God, this, this night explodes with the radiance of the risen Christ. Set us ablaze with the power of your love and, and propel us into the world to live and proclaim the gospel of the living Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our New Testament reading comes to us all the way from uh, Chatsworth. Uh, please forgive me while I look for it quickly. The reading is taken from the book of Romans, chapter 6, reading from verses 3 to 11. Dead to sin, but alive because of Christ. Don't you know that all who share in Christ Jesus by being baptized also share in his death? When we were baptized, we died and were buried with Christ. We were baptized so that we would live a new life as Christ was raised to life by the glory of God the Father. If we shared in Jesus' death by being baptized, we will be raised to life with him. 
we know that the persons we used to be were nailed were nailed to the cross with Jesus. This was done so that our sinful bodies would no longer be the slaves of sin. We know that sin doesn't have power over dead people. As surely as we died with Christ, we believe we will also live with him. We know that death no longer has any power over Christ. He died and was raised to life, never again to die. When Christ died, he died for sin once and for all. But now he's alive, and he lives only for God. In the same way, you must think of yourselves as dead to the power of sin. But Christ Jesus has given life to you, and you live for God. This is the word of the Lord. Don't worry about standing. <laughs> Listen to the good news proclaimed in the gospel according to Matthew, chapter 28, starting at verse 1. Glory oh, to Jesus. Christ our Saviour. After the Sabbath, at dawn on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. There was a violent earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven, and going to the tomb, rolled back the stone, and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothes were white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. The angel said to the woman, Do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here. He has risen. Just as he said, come and see the place where he lay, then go quickly and tell his disciples, he has risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Now I have told you. So the woman hurried away from the tomb, afraid yet filled with joy, and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them. Greetings, he said. They came to him, clasped his feet and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. This is the Gospel of Christ. Praise, Praise to Christ, Christ our Lord. Normally at this time, we would renew our baptismal promises, but instead, I will wait until we are together to do that. Um, so that we can share in the renewal of baptismal promises face to face. We're going to continue right now with the prayers of the people, prayers for the church. Thank you, Robin. It seems I'm having, I'm still having the trouble with that. Let me see if I can find it a different way. Give me a few moments, please. What you missed in the beginning was the lighting of the fire, the blessing and preparation of the Paschal candle and the exaltate. Um, 
I'm not going to redo it. Come along to next year's Easter Vigil and you will see those and be able to share in them. Robin is now going to speak, uh, is going to pray for us. Still struggling with this audio. And my PowerPoint has decided it's going to go on strike. I think the easiest will be if I simply continue with the prayers. Father in heaven, we praise you that on this night Christ rose from the dead. We thank you for his triumph over sin and death and for his gift of eternal life. We remember before you those who have died in the great hope of the resurrection. Unite us with them in your unending joy. Lord, in your mercy. Your offering. I'm going to see if I can get Robin's. We pray for ourselves and all Christian people that we may live as those who believe in the victory of the cross. Lord, in your mercy. Your offering. We pray for those who at the season are receiving Christ's new life by water in the Spirit. May they be able to recognize the risen Christ in us, their brothers and sisters in the Lord. Lord, in your mercy. Your Bless and guide all who govern the nations of the earth. Help them to know what is right and to do it. And right now, Lord, taking a cue from Robin. I pray for our president and give you thanks that he is acting so wisely at this stage. I pray that he will continue to work in your wisdom and to your glory. And I pray that you will protect him, that his health may stay good all this time. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. we pray for all who suffer or are troubled. Give them good friends to comfort them and grant them healing and the knowledge of your Son in his victorious passion. And right now we lift up to you, Kathy. Thank you, Lord, that she's in rehab. And pray that the rehab is working and that she will regain the use of the left-hand side. Uh, we pray too for Alan Ethorn. Thank you, Lord, that his breathing is easing up and that he might be able to walk around a bit easier as well. We pray for Nokatula, that you'll protect her as she takes her oral chemo. We pray too, Lord, that you will look after her health and that she might be able to eat something. Um, I'm told also that she's struggling with bad side effects to the oral chemo. Please, Lord, may those side effects decrease that they are bearable. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. we praise you, Lord God, sovereign over all, because you have taken your great power and begun to reign. Amen. We continue now with the Eucharist, and we are going to share the peace. This is the day which the Lord has made. 
we will rejoice and be glad in it. The peace of the risen Christ be with you. Alleluia, alleluia. Peace be with you. Alleluia, alleluia. alleluia. And shalom to all my brothers and sisters in Christ, even though we are separated this day. We continue now. We continue now with the Eucharist uh, or the, the spiritual communion. Sorry, I'm jumping around because I've got that on a different page. Let us pray together this prayer. Jesus, may, may all, all that, that is you flow into me. me. May, may your body and blood be my food and drink. drink. May your passion and death be my strength and life. Jesus, with you by my side, enough has been given. May I shelter and seek be the shadow of your cross. Let me not run from the love which you offer, but hold me safe from the forces of evil. On each of my dyings shed your light and your love. Keep calling to me until that day comes when, when with, with your, your saints, saints I may I praise, praise you forever. You. Amen. Let us say the Lord's Prayer together. Our, Our Father, Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Lord, you have nourished us with the Easter sacrament. Fill us with your spirit, and make us one in peace and love. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. We say the prayer of self-offering. Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, we offer ourselves to you as, as a living sacrifice, sacrifice in Jesus Christ, Christ, our Lord. In the in power of the of Holy Spirit, Spirit enable us to live to your praise and, and glory. Amen. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow morning at 8.30 when we celebrate the risen Christ. And uh, Adele has just asked, may we stay at home in peace? Indeed, <laughs> you may do so. May Adonai bless you and keep you. May Adonai make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May Adonai look upon you with favor and give you his peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you, your family, and all for whom you pray, this day and always. Amen. Amen. Have a good night's rest. I'll see you tomorrow morning at 8.30. Stay at home in peace, in love, to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen.